You know it, I know it, now it's time to admit it. The way your racket looks does matter. And I'm gonna go through my top five ugliest tennis rackets. So, the ugliest tennis rackets. So let's be clear, this has no bearing on the way they play. Some of the rackets in my top five I love, and they're fantastic rackets, but they don't look great. I don't choose my rackets based on how they look. I don't particularly like the way my racket looks, but I choose it based on how it helps me play, how it optimizes my game. But these rackets would not be optimizing anything in my mind because I'd be so horrified at having them in my hand that I wouldn't use them and they would destroy my confidence on court, potentially. So, without further ado, let's get into my top five ugly rackets. In at number five is the Wilson Clash. Now, some of you might be saying, what are you talking about? It's shiny, it's red, it's embossed on the side, which is cool, I'll give them that. Um, this is more about fatigue. Just seen it for ages. Um, quite bored of it. It was great when it came out, but it's been around for a long time. And one thing I will say that I truly dislike, which is quite a, uh, quite a niche thing, is that the, the red stops and makes way for black, whereas they seem to have changed that with the blade um, and with the pro stuff, is that the, the color continues through the hoop, um, sort of behind or alongside the bumper. Uh, and in the clash, um, they haven't done that. And it looks cheap. So there you go, in at number five in the ugliest rackets, The Clash from Wilson. In at number four on my ugly racket list is quite a surprising entry. And while he may be considered the goat, he is also my least favored goat. And his racket, bizarrely to some people, I find to be pretty ugly. Now, for a couple of reasons, it's too shiny. And I love a black racket. Think about the old RF, the old pro staffs, they look great. But this sort of shininess, I'm not into it. It looks sort of slightly tacky. Um, and it was, it's called the Speed Legend. Um, and Djokovic is undoubtedly a legend, but they used to have some gold on the side of the Speed to make it sort of legendary. And they took that off for the legend version. So again, marks down for not being consistent with your legendary typeface and colorings. Um, Overall, it's a fantastic racket to play with, but not only is it boring, it's slightly tacky, and I much prefer a matte black. In at number four in the ugly rackets, head speed legend. In at number three. Now, this is a terrific tennis racket. One of the most surprising rackets we've reviewed in the last two years here, but it's got a trash name and it also looks trash and that is the Prince Beast. Really sorry, love the racket, um, but um, I find the font on the Beast sort of slightly tacky, sort of childish. Uh, it's sort of as if like a teenager has designed it for their sort of tech project at school. Um, not loving the orange, sort of smattering, uh, just not, not my favorite looking racket. In fact, my third ugliest racket. Um, one thing I will say in its defense is that the tech stream sort of window believe it or not. You can actually see into the texture of the racket, which is pretty cool, uh, but is overshadowed by the rest of the look. So unfortunately, the Prince Beast is my number three ugly racket. In at number two, and with a slight silvery livery in the silver place, is a special edition racket, and that is Babolat's Pure Drive. Now, I think this is partly through disappointment. So when we knew there was a 30th anniversary coming of the Pure Drive, uh, we were excited about the possibilities of what it could be. Could it be a sort of throwback to the original one, some sort of vintage styling on it? Uh, and it's not. It's very, very similar to the current one. It's got a unique design throughout, much like the new Chelsea kits have, uh, but that doesn't save it for me. It's just slightly boring. Um, and just very disappointing overall. So the Pure Drive 30th Anniversary Edition is my least favored racket in terms of style, and number two on my ugly list. Soz Pure Drive. In at number one, drum roll please. I'll get the racket while the drum roll drums. My number one ugly racket is the Pure Aero Rafa. Now, 
Some people love this racket. It scores very highly in Josh's top five best looking rackets. So a little bit Marmite. If you don't know what Marmite is in the States or anywhere else in the world, Google it. It's a strange sort of yeast extract spread. Google Marmite, it's delicious. Um, but I don't think this is delicious. Um, and neither does Rafa because he hasn't used it or not for very long anyway, he went back to an old design. And for me, it is just too busy and too bright and too childish. I'm an old man now uh, and this racket clearly isn't designed for me. Um, I, when playing with it, it's so bright it kind of flashes and distracts me. So it's actually making me worse at tennis, believe it or not. Um, again, bit Marmite, some people love it, I do not, and it is my number one ugly tennis racket in 2024. So there you have it, my top five ugly rackets of 2024. Now, this is obviously personal preference, and I can't wait to hear how wrong you think I am. We'll be delving into those comments with vigor and joy. But, again, not a, not a reflection on how these rackets play. They are beautiful rackets. But I just don't like the way they look. And they say, look good, feel good, play good. And these aren't gonna do it for me. As always, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to share, so you never miss a thing from me and everyone ugly at PH Tennis.